I feel I have to make this video for a couple of reasons. First off, as an atheist, the majority of other atheists out there self-identify as political liberals. I am part of what some people claim is 20% of liberals who are also conservatives, although I have no idea if that figure is accurate, and I personally think it sounds a little high, but there it is. So when I make a video where I'm critical of liberals, I usually get some complaints because here I am, an atheist with some what might be considered liberal social views, pointing out that I dislike the way liberals do things. So I figured it's time to set the record straight. One of the very first videos I ever did on my channel, I set about to define what I consider conservatism to be. In that video, I set down four components that I consider essential hallmarks of conservatism. Those were personal responsibility, fiscal responsibility, small government, and keeping the government the hell out of people's lives. As I said then, neither of the major political parties that we have are at all conservative, as neither pay the slightest bit of attention to any of those core principles. You'll notice I say I'm a conservative, I don't describe myself as a Republican. The modern GOP has nothing at all to do with conservatism. You also have to remember that both conservatism and liberalism are political ideologies. Some people think that in order to be conservative, you have to be a fundamentalist Christian, but nothing could be further from the truth. Your religion, or lack thereof, has nothing at all to do with your political views. It has been the purposeful commingling of these ideas that has, in my opinion, ruined the Republican Party. Any candidate that wears their religiosity on their sleeve as a means of getting votes ought to be run away from fast. That goes for any party out there. Any voter who is voting on the basis of their religion is an idiot. That said though, conservatives and liberals both have political ideologies because they think they have the best way, in their own opinions, that will improve the country. Even if both sides have similar goals, they may have wildly differing reasons for wanting to achieve those goals, and I find those reasons to be tremendously important, even if they lead to the same place, because why we want to achieve something is every bit and perhaps even more important than what we want to achieve. And this is where the disagreements often come in. I may have very strong beliefs about equality, for instance, and I do, and a liberal may have equally strong beliefs about equality, and I've met a lot that certainly do, but we may have entirely different, even diametrically opposed reasons for doing so. Now, the reason this comes up is because every time a discussion about, say, hiring practices comes up, people on the left freak out because I say that in hiring, I don't consider race, gender, sexual orientation, or anything else in my decisions. I hire the person best qualified for the job, regardless of their skin color or what's between their legs. Somehow, I guess that makes me a monster. But the color of someone's skin, or their gender, or who they like to sleep with, none of those things actually affect their ability to do the job that needs to be done. That's why I couldn't care less about any of it. That's why I don't say I have to hire a transgender albino of French Polynesian descent, because that doesn't mean a damn thing at all. And because it doesn't mean a damn thing at all, I get constantly vilified for it. And that's the difference between equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. I don't have a checklist that includes physical characteristics, except where those physical characteristics actually matter to the ability to do the job, and I can think of very, very few cases where that might apply. But apparently, I'm supposed to pay close attention to the gender and racial demographics at my workplace because that's the only way to achieve equality. No, equality comes when those things simply don't matter, where it's the quality of your character and your skill that gets you the job, not an accident of birth. So while we're both saying that this is for equality, we're not as far as I'm concerned. One of us is a racist, and it's not me. And there's a lot of out-and-out -out racists on the political left. I'm sorry, there just are. So they try to redefine the terminology so they don't look bad. But exactly who is it that's paying abnormal attention to race and gender and sexual orientation? Sure the hell isn't me! I know I could go through case after case after case after case, I just don't think it's necessary. This is where the ideological divide comes in. The left, and I can only generalize, but from what I see most often, the left spends their time with their hands out wanting stuff. If you want stuff, you're not working hard enough. Society doesn't owe you anything special. You already get the same opportunities as everyone else. 
You have a school to go to. It's your responsibility to make something of yourself and to learn something so that you can have a productive life. If the culture that you choose, and it is a choice, no matter what excuses you make, but if that culture tells you to drop out of school, take drugs, join gangs, and have dozens of kids out of wedlock, then you have screwed up your own life and you have nobody to point fingers at but yourself. I don't care how terrible your childhood was. At some point in time, you need to take responsibility for yourself and your life and make something worthwhile of yourself. You need to learn from your own mistakes so that you don't pass on those lessons to your children. There has to be a point where, but, 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 no longer matters. But a lot of self-identified liberals that I interact with on a daily basis Apparently, they haven't reached that point. They simply are not willing to tell those who have screwed up their own lives that it's their own responsibility to fix it because responsibility is a bad word to the political left. They don't want people to have to fix their own lives. They want the government to do it. And that's a particular boondoggle that's been shared by both the Democrats and the Republicans. Neither side, at least in recent history, has seen an expansion of the government that they didn't embrace. That's because neither of them are out to help the country. They're out to play surrogate parent for irresponsible citizens so they can buy votes with political funding and thus maintain their power. Let's be honest here. They don't care about we the people. They care about their votes and they'll say anything to get them and most people are stupid enough to fall for it. When you vote for a candidate, it isn't about which political ideology is best for the people, it's which group of dishonest shysters are you going to fund for the next four years. That people can't figure out what's going on here is just sad. And before you say, well that's not the liberals, that's the regressives, don't bother. The progressives are just liberals gone completely batshit insane. And that's something else I've talked about before, the idea of labels. It doesn't really matter what label you slap on your forehead, it matters what you actually believe and what positions you actually hold. I see lots of people who hold what I would identify as very conservative views, who self-identify as liberals because they want nothing at all to do with the religious right. I had a guest host on my podcast way back in the day, and we agreed on pretty much everything, but he called himself a liberal, and I called myself a conservative. Labels are stupid. Labels divide. I'm willing to bet that a big percentage of the atheists who currently identify themselves as liberals would be, using any rational metric, conservatives as far as I'm concerned. Or, according to some on the religious right, well, I'm almost certainly a liberal. None of that ought to matter at the end of the day. So if you get offended when I say something about liberals, stop and think about it before you shoot off a nasty email or comment. Think about why I might have said it or why you reacted the way that you did. Or just ask. That's always an option that most people don't bother to try out. What the heck? We could have a conversation. You never know what might come out of it. We might learn something about each other and maybe, just maybe, rethink our positions. And heaven forbid anything like that might happen.